Hello and welcome to a pretty basic rough tutorial on how to get all 12 notes from the variant mode dungeons completed in patch 6.25. This is a very dirty guide so we're not going to be going into too much detail, we're certainly not going to be looking at boss guides or anything like that, just simply the steps you need to take to actually ensure that you get the notes that you need, all 12 of which. Once you have all 12 of the notes, as you can see on the actual CNV duty finder at the bottom with these indicators, you will unlock a mount. So you want big fluffy boy? Follow these steps. So first of all, let's go just in order. So we're going to start with the left path. There are three paths here, three doors. The left path then for note number one, simply clear the first boss all the way up until there's the room with the sacks in it. Simply, you need to get the sack in the northeast corner, the green one, and then the yellow sack in the southeast corner of this room. So top right, bottom right. Get those interact with the thing and you're pretty much good to go um, once you actually have set this up you will spawn a teleporter on the floor simply what you need to do is teleport in there there'll be some ads that spawn simply defeat these for note one do not move any further forward so nanamo walks up to the gate but we're not going to follow her instead we're going to go to the western side of this room and you'll see when she walks up to the door of the you know the place to go to the next boss the last boss there's actually a door over here that becomes interactable but only interactable if she's over there at the gate so you need to wait until she's at the gate before you can open this once you open this you'll find a cupboard basically with a massive vase in it this ewer this actually adds an extra mechanic to the boss fight you'll find that with a lot of these as well simply opening the door is the prerequisite to getting note number one simply go talk to nanamo go down She'll have some extra dialogue and then kill the boss as usual and you'll get note one. So for note number two, you need to do exactly the same thing as we did for note number one. We go and we pick up the northeastern corner green sack and we pick up the southeastern corner um, uh, yellow sack and we place those on there to spawn the teleporter. We teleport through and basically kill the ads, but this time we're not going to be interacting with the cupboard. We're just going to walk straight up to the gate and Nanamo will have completely different dialogue this time. We'll drop down, we'll kill the boss, and that's all you need to do to get note two. To get note three, uh, simply we're going to be using the wrong sacks in this room. Um, so this is for both three and four, basically. Both three and four notes, you just simply um, put any old sacks anywhere, it doesn't matter. The door will open instead of triggering the teleporter. And then once you're in this room, there are two ways of doing this. For note number three, you need to trigger the puff circles after the door opens. So once you've killed these ads, there'll be all these little circles on the floor. If you walk in these, they explode into AoEs on the floor. They don't do any damage. They just, if you open all of them, they add an extra mechanic to the boss fight. And that's how you get note three. If you're after note four, you don't trigger the puff circle. Simply just walk around them, don't stand on any of them, and then you kill the boss in the next room as normal and you'll get note four. Very simple, okay? So now we've done with the left path, let's go straight down the middle. So for notes eight and nine on the middle path, because I thought we'd do left to right. So for number eight and nine, it's basically the same setup. Uh, simply kill the first boss and then get to the bit where you have the scales. Uh, ordinarily, obviously, the, the, the answer would be helmet and fruit. We're not going to put anything on the scales for both eight and nine notes. Okay, once we have done that, add spawn because we did it incorrectly. And then we move on to the next room. In this room... For note 8, at the lever choice, you choose the right lever, right? This will add a completely different element to the boss fight. If I remember, this will add uh, wind to the fight. If I was to pull the left lever, this would add boulders to the fight and also would allow us to get note 9. So for number 8, pull the right lever. For number 9, pull the left lever. Obviously, do these on subsequent runs and you'll get them no problem. For notes 10 and 11 then, this actually requires you to get the scale section correct. So we simply pick helmet plus fruit, which is obviously, um, you know, 
the first and the fourth option there. So helmet and fruit for both 10 and 11, we're getting this correct. Once you've done this correctly, a teleporter will activate. We simply walk up to that teleporter and teleport into the next room. This is the difference between note and 10, uh, notes 10 and 11 then. For note 10, you need to interact with the nulled statue. This again adds an extra mechanic to the following boss fight but gives you note 10 upon its defeat. If we want to get note 11, we do the Thal statue, right? And that adds a different mechanic to the boss fight and we get note 11. So, so far we should have the majority of those notes. We've done both left and middle. So let's do the right path, okay? So for note number five and six then, simply take the left path because this is the easiest to make sure you don't get the other uh, answers accidentally. Uh, take the left path on the elevators, go round, kill all the ads. Eventually you'll come to a door. Um, the first option for um, number five is spark. If you want note five, you answer spark, which is the incorrect answer. It actually means that you have to start beating down the door. Uh, once you've beaten down the door, which is an actual mob, uh, you go and unceremoniously fight the boss inside the coffin. That will give you note five. For note number six, though, you choose the correct option, which is flame. This opens the door normally and affects the boss with different mechanics. For note number seven, we're going to be taking the right lift after the first boss. This time, we have extra steps for this. So first of all, in the room with the dragons, the drakes, we kill largest to smallest. The way we've done it is we've marked the father, the mother, and then, as you can see, brother, sister, then Drakeling. You must kill them in that order, okay? Once they are dead, um, you move on to the next room, which will open up uh, by magic, which will be full of wraiths. Kill all of the wraiths and grab the incense item that's on the side. Simply go up to the next room with the sarcophagus, trigger it by opening it and then kill the boss there that will give you note seven now for our final note number 12 this is basically the same path as number seven so after that first boss we're taking that lift to the right we're killing the drakes from largest to smallest so father mother brother sister drakeling okay then we're going on um, and we're killing the wraiths and revenants in the next room. Now we pick up the incense. Now the incense is very important. Pick up the incense and go up to the next room to the sarcophagus. You target the coffin, but you do not interact with this. And this is the secret. You use the following emotes. I'm serious about this, by the way. I was amazed by this. You use slash bow. Wait a couple of seconds. Slash respect. Wait a couple of seconds. Slash V pose. Wait a few seconds. And then slash kneel in that exact order with those pauses in between. Nanamo will then trigger a separate, very rare special uh, set of dialogue that's secret and say, ah, you're performing the ancient funeral rites. Right? If you've done this correctly, a door will open to the north of the room that's not on the map. This is a completely secret path and will lead to a completely secret boss and the twelfth note if you can defeat the boss. It's very special and uh, performing the proper funeral rites to put that creature to bed that you don't even have to fight it is a fantastic work of genius in my personal opinion. The last boss has a bunch of mechanics from Delibrum Regine. So if you know the chess mechanics as well as um, movements between things, it's quite taxing. Um, enjoy, honestly. Uh, me and my girlfriend did this and it, it was a lot of fun. It really was. But that's how you get all 12 notes. And once you have all 12 notes, you will get an achievement. As you can see on my screen, we did it in a slightly different order and we will get access to that juicy mount. Now we're on to the part of the video where we're going to have a look at the mount itself. Okay, here's the exciting bit. So we're going to be looking at the mount now. And there's a reason I chose to come here at night specifically is because the mount has quite a nice glow effect. So let's look at this. We'll look at it in daylight as well. Don't worry. But let's have a look at this in night. So this is the silky mount. 
And as usual in these videos, we like to read off the text. So, you know, if you want to skip along a little bit in the video, that's fine by me. It says, summon forth your silky mount, because cleanliness is next to cuteness. Encountered in the depths of the Sildan Subterran, this arcane entity was the familiar of former Sultana Nanasha ul Nasha, who created it to keep the royal palace squeaky clean. Contrary to its appearance, the palm on the tail is the actual being rather than the mouse-like creature. The hidden text says, I'm counting on ye to clean up this mess. A quote there of Blow Blowidin? I don't remember that NPC. So that's weird. So it's not actually a real thing. It's The palm is the creature and this is like a simulacrum. That's very strange. Let's have a look at this mount then, which obviously makes a nice squeaky noise. Let's hear that again. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, like I say, we're going to be looking at this in the day in a moment to get all the details, but it is a very beautiful looking particular mount. And uh, yeah, what a great reward from all of that effort. It took us a, a good few hours to actually put together that uh, guide and also several runs. Uh, you can get about 900 or so astronomy uh, just over about nearly a thousand astronomy, I would say, from just doing the 12 runs. Uh, but we did quite a few more than that because of footage reasons. But the reason I wanted to be in the dark first is this. Yay! Look at that! How cool is that? He's got a glowy tail. He's just adorable. And we've got this glowy sort of soundtrack to the hum. It's beautiful. Let's zoom into that. So this is the entity then. So that's the life form. It's not just a pom. That is so strange, isn't it? Now that we've read that text. We know that the rat is, is not actually the rat. I, I still believe that it's the rat, personally. <laughs> I will believe in my ignorance. But yeah, what a fantastic looking flying mount. And uh, yeah, a great reward. So before we look at the daytime, we might as well look at what music comes with this mount, as most people will be asking that question almost immediately. So let's plop that on. Mount music is turned on. So you'll be pleased to know that it is the piano music. Which is absolutely fantastic. I don't know about you, but when I first went into the Sildan Subterranean and I heard that music, like the piano version stuff, I was so happy. It really is a fantastic soundtrack to 6.25, like it always is. Like, Masayoshi Soken and the rest of the team are geniuses, let's put it that way. <laughs> but that's the music, it's great. Let's look at this in the day. Yeah, that's better. Now we've got some actual daylight to uh, look at this fine specimen. So yes, this particular mount is definitely going to be on the, the top of my list for a very long time. It's definitely the coolest thing I've seen added as a reward, especially from something like this. The last time we had uh, a mount from like field note kind of things was Borgia and uh, Zadnor, obviously with the, you know, the bike mount. I would say this is a lot easier to get, honestly, especially since you can queue solo or up to four players and go and do variant mode. Very easy. I love the detail on, on the crown as well. It's just really nice, isn't it? It's a really nice mount. You've got a fluffy palm at the back, which is apparently a life form. Who knows? And yeah, it's just a really nice mount. So people will be wanting to see this in, obviously, motion across the ground and things like that. So let's just gently walk forward with my controller. That's the, the view you will see. And there's its run animation. So it runs very much like you would expect a rodent to run. Very cool. From that angle as well. And of course, when we fly, it's basically flying by the power of the POM. Zoomed all the way in, by the way, like this, uh, you just basically get a view of what's below you because the POM raises the model quite high. You really have to like pan your camera quite a bit to, to fit the entire mountain, which isn't a big thing. It's not a big deal, but it is a thing that uh, a lot of people will be surprised at because it's not uh, necessarily level. And that's because the mount is essentially suspended in midair, right? 
Anyway, let me know what you think about this mount, if you've got this one yet. Hopefully the guide helps. I've tried to make it as quick and as, like I say, as dirty and, you know, simple as possible. We haven't gone into boss mechanics or anything like that, I'm afraid. That's something that we'd have to do a separate video on if people wanted that. But for the most part, the mechanics are fairly simple. It's just that secret 12th note boss that's quite quirky. But it's basically just a reiteration of what you've learnt and trial and error really uh the way we got through it was going ah that does that i mean we did wipe a couple of times and a couple of bosses uh, myself and my girlfriend and i've done some of this solo it's not too bad once you learn what you've done wrong it's easy to rectify that my advice to you though uh go in as a dps with some kind of high damage uh, for AoE, so a summon is great for that. That's the one I did practically all of it on. And then take yourself Rampart and Cure. That's all you basically need. Rampart, because you can cycle that repeatedly. It doesn't have, like, diminishing returns. You can basically have Rampart up forever if you keep cycling it through. And Cure if you do take a slight hit too far. But um, don't worry about things. Just do things mechanically and chip away at those bosses. It is scaled, so even if you went in solo, they make it easier for you. So the boss's health and damage and stuff is scaled to, to one player. It scales to two player. It scales to three player. And it scales all the way up to four player. So you've got no problems, really. Hopefully that helped. Like I say, best of luck on you getting yourself your fuzzy little friend. And I'll see you all next time. Much love, and I'll see you all. Bye-bye.